consulting. Consulting? Any other consulting? Consult. So everyone else here is full time full time production. Next up we have Mr. Brian French. Hello. switch some equipment here while I'm doing that. I just wanted to thank our hosts, uh, the Arboretum, the Seattle Arboretum here uh, with the University of Washington um, with, uh, and Melissa, and, or sorry, uh, Jessica Farmer and then Melissa from the Pacific Northwest IASA. Um, their, their partnership here for us to, to use this great facility has really uh, helped out quite a bit. So, I would like to talk about the seven P's of the climbing arborist. Um, how many climbers do we have in this room? Pretty much everyone. That's why we're here, right? Um, well, I'll get right into it. The, um, I'm, I'm speaking from experience here. I, I don't have a lot of statistics like uh, James had to show, which is really great to look back at those. but. Um, Experience is really important too, and that's something that we all share together, and our communication with each other is really, um, and, and for me, that's the most important thing that's kept me safe over the years. I don't have to knock on wood um, necessarily because I'm not, I'm thankful of the people that I've been able, and I appreciate the people I've been able to work with over the years. Um, because of their professionalism and their safety culture that's really who's trained me, and, and I think those, those individuals who have um, kept me from becoming a statistic, as, as James mentioned. So, uh, well, I'll just name them real quick. So, proper planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> All right? That's been on for a long time. It's seven Ps. Uh, the British uh, military and the U.S. military used that adage for many years, which is really just goes back to experience and finding ways to keep um, us from getting into situations that may get us into an accident eventually or an incident. Proper. I like to think of this as professionalism, our professionalism, who we are. It's smiling, uh, confidence, um, and how, how we treat one another, kindness. Empathy. Uh, these are the things that I think are really uh, important, not only on the job site, but with our clients. Um, and it's a way to show confidence. Um, also, being empathetic to those or helping those in need of help, younger climbers. And then maybe, maybe really getting on to the folks who know better that might cause harm knowingly or put other ones in harm way. It's, it's our responsibility to call people out. That's, that's what's kept me um, when I think about how I haven't, I've never fallen out of a tree. I haven't, um, I haven't been hospitalized from an injury. And I'm just speaking from experience. It's because people have called me out in the past. That's how I learn. And other people have showed me how to be a better arborist. And then we'll get to our next one here, planning. To me, this really has to do with organization. How organized are we? When we're talking about organization on the job, I, I usually go back to, well, how did the estimate start? Who did the estimating? Have you ever got to the job for a removal, walked around the backside of the tree, and realized that there's a giant cavity on the backside of the tree and had to call into the shop and say, hey, we might have to change plans here. And then maybe the, the shop is like, we'll just deal with it. And then you have uh, a lot of pressure to like come up with a solution to make the job. Has anybody experienced anything like this ever before? <laughs> Organization and, and, and planning can keep those situations from happening. That's where we get, uh, that's where we kind of get in trouble sometimes because we have uh, this overwhelming pressure to get the job done and, uh, and accidents can occur. Uh, site inspections in the morning, that's when we catch those things. And we want to talk to each other about that. We want to have open communication and we want to come up with solutions before somebody gets into a situation. We want to identify that before it happens. Uh, 
Preparedness. We want to be prepared. We want to prepare for the worst, and we want to minimize risk. How many tree risk assessors are here? That, that program changed me as a climber. And I really speak as a climber who, who got that qualification, but um, it really teaches you how to assess risk. And we can take that into the trees so we can identify perils that we, might, that we may uh, uh, be exposed to beforehand. How do we go through methodically? How do we go through step by step to identify risks that may affect me or other people working with me? Getting permits. I would consider that being prepared, right? How often, has anybody ever gotten to a job and um, there's a, maybe a right-of-way tree and there's a bunch of cars there? Or the traffic's just blowing by and you call in the shop and you're like, hey, I think we should get this lane closed. And they're like, ah, yeah, nope, you just got to get it done, <laughs> right? Accidents can occur from that. Utility companies offer, most utility companies offer a free program. You call them beforehand and you get the lines cleared from the tree beforehand. You have to schedule that before you get to the job. Otherwise, you get those pressures. And then contacting and keeping in uh, an open communication with your local uh, rescue teams, your fire department, or what have you. Go ahead and call them. Let them know. I'm going to be down at this site in two weeks. We have a huge uh, crane removal, Dan, a big crane removal, and, um, and it looks like a, a pretty dangerous situation. There's a craft that's right next to the house. We've got this awesome climber, um, but we'd like, to, we'd like you guys to stop by. I've done that before. Has anybody done that before? Yeah? One of the things I'd say is in our area, we are on the emergency response team, which is kind of the opposite direction of what you're talking about. So the Albany and Corvallis Fire and Rescue Department have us on speed dial because a lot of times there's out of reach of ladder trucks and stuff. And so once uh, every other year we go there and we have one training session with them and tell them what we can do, what we carry, and that we're there for them if they've ever needed us. Thank goodness in the last 12 years they've never needed our services. But uh, it's also a good thing to do with your uh, fire and rescue. Thank you, Vernon. Uh, Dave Stice also here uh, in the King County area is connecting with fire departments and bringing the arborists and the fire departments together. If you want to contact him at some time, there's training opportunities and the ability to, to really meet with and talk to and share your experiences with those who uh, hopefully you don't have to uh, call on in the future. Prevention. Get trained. There's tons of training out there. That's why we're here today. To name a few, we have North American Training Solutions, Arbor Canada, Westberg, Ascension Group. Ascension Group. Does anybody know of any other ones in this area? Are the colleges still putting on uh, the tree Universities. Yeah, universities. And uh, the PNW ISA now. I mean, that's, that's what we're doing here with the PNW. Is, has brought, brought us together to share our experience and talk about our safety culture. And who, who needs that? Everyone, right? I need it just as much as James, as Will, and Dan, and, and Dan, and Katie. We all need training. And one thing that's kind of cool that I, I, I just have to mention is that this, this program, this program sold out today. That's huge, is that right? There's like 70 people. Right? So that's, to me, that's testimony. That's like, okay, people are showing up. We're talking about training. This is awesome. We need to do more of this. We need more of this in our community. Who agrees with me there? Very cool. Piss. Has anybody, has anybody uh, had to go to the bathroom really bad, and you're trying to put a throw ball in the tree, and you just can't focus? It's like... Oh man, like I really, you know, where am I going to go? Has anybody experienced that? Or you get up to the top of the tree, you're getting ready to, you're putting your face cut in, you're about ready to blow that top out, and oh god, like I really, I, 
I can't, I can't descend out of the tree now. It's going to take me a half an hour to get back up here. Focus. We need to be able to focus on our work. And so if we're working in a site where we have all kinds of distractions from others around us, um, a, uh, the, the manager of the job or somebody screaming at us, ah, blah, 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 and you're, you're just like, I'm just going to cut this thing off. You're not focusing on your work, right? Um, and that even goes back to, um, you know, with, with our focus, uh, you know, the fatigue. One of the things I've noticed, does anybody read TCIA um, and read the, the accident reports? Have you noticed that fatigue comes up often? It's not, it doesn't clearly, it's not something you just put your finger on and be like, that's fatigue and that's not. But it's all, almost every situation when somebody's talking about the experience, this horrible experience that they had, they talk about not being focused and, uh, and fatigue it comes up. Distractions. Finally, our health. Uh, a friend of mine, Ed Carpenter, he wrote uh, a, an article in the Arbor News a couple, a few years ago, about us being uh, climbing athletes. We're we're arborists, but we're these climbing athletes. We're athletic. We need to take care of our bodies the way athletes do. We need to stay hydrated. We need to eat good food. We need to um, be healthy and have healthy minds and take care of one each other, of one, each, of one another uh, at, our, at our work sites. And remember to take breaks. Breaks are awesome. When you get tired, even just like a two minute, just sit down and breathe for two minutes. Two minutes can, can last hours of work later. It can really, really be effective. So I had one more, performance, gear, your gear, right? This goes back to organization and some of these other topics, but our performance depends on the quality of our gear. Where do we get gear? Westberg, Vermeer, gear retailers, they have um, a lot of information out there about where we can get, what kind of gear we can get, how does it work, what are the, the, the specifications on how it works, how it behaves with each other. You can find a lot of information out there. There's online training. Uh, Climbing Arborist is a one-stop, go-to online training place that you can get good training. Facebook. We'll talk about Facebook maybe a little bit later. Um, and uh, understanding our cycles to failure. What does our gear look like? When do we need to toss it out? We need to communicate with each other and share our experience. This worked good, this didn't work. And when we're trying out our gear, we want to start low and slow. My friend Will here, he's always telling everyone that, start low and slow. I have seen people um, in incidents where they got some new gear, they ran halfway up the tree and they got in trouble. You want to know your gear before you're using it. And I have two tips before I close. Please use your lanyard. Tie in twice. It's huge. A friend of mine fell recently in Portland, a uh, local arborist. Um, and it's just, it's just another uh, case with, without the, the flip line. So please tie in twice when using a chainsaw. And when you are using a chainsaw, Keep two hands on the chainsaw. Thank you.